Hello internet, and this is Kala. Welcome back to our let's play of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. And let us finish the tutorial that we were working on before. There we go. So we finished the first three lessons last time. So now we will move on to lesson four, Magic and Spellcaster. We're going to learn and cast spells. As we know, we have control P and space as commands. So uh, let's go. We can memorize from carried spell books with uppercase M. We're clicking the memorization tab. And we can learn more spells as we gain more experience. Read magic dart. So we have memorized magic dart. Uh, and we can cast it like so. Put on this ring and rest up. Where? Oh, not where. It's P. Put on. C. Ring of magical power. And now we suddenly have 12 magical. Uh, undead do not regenerate health. It's impossible to tell how wounded they are. Uh, you can also cast spells by pressing control and left clicking on the monster. Let's try that. There we go. There we go. Rest up a bit. There we go. Woo. Um, okay, so right now we have a 30% failure rate on conjuration. This means every time we cast, we'll fail about 30% of the time. Let's uh, wield the staff, do that again. Our failure has gone down significantly to 11%. This is good, this is very good. One of your skills just passed a hole into your point. The skills you use are automatically trained when you gain experience by killing monsters. Experience goes through spells you actually use. You may choose otherwise, of course. Uh, gaining a level means you can memorize more difficult spells. Let's memorize evaporate. Spells may be difficult to learn or cast, but we can keep trying. There we go. Uh, bad potions can be launched at monsters due to, with evaporate. When that spell is memorized, examining potion gives a hint to the clouds it will produce. Buy the potions to make use of them. Let's go in. Okay, so we have potions of slowing and paralysis. Let's buy up. Oh, and poison too. Let's buy all of that. An extra paralysis would be helpful, and an extra slowing would be. Can we buy everything in the store? No. I think that's a good set, though. Okay. Cast the evaporate. You need to first select a potion to vaporize and select a target for the resulting clouds. For the latter, you can directly aim, but also aim so that you can cover multiple um, within the range. Okay. Let's cast Evaporate. Start with Paralysis. And fire. There. Uh, poison. Similarly. There we go. We don't have enough magic points to cast that, so let's retreat quickly, rest up a bit. We 
There we go. Very good. Spell casting makes us hungry. Spell hunger is higher for more difficult spells and can be reduced by high intelligence through training spell casting. This is very important. Uh, we'll be using that quite a bit. So let's eat this bread ration and keep moving. Um, you can also forget memorized spells. Oh. So I don't think we want to forget any of them right now. Okay. Let us read this. Kava's Handbook of Necromancy for Newbies. And we do want to learn Animate Skeleton. So let us read this scroll of forgetfulness. Forget Magic Dart. And read our uh, Handbook of Necromancy for Newbies. And learn Animate Skeleton. The spell raises an inert skeleton to unlife, even if that skeleton was still encased in flesh. Note that skeletons are incapable of leaving the level they were created on. Okay, cool. So now we know that. Oh. I think we have covered them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Perfect. So let us keep moving. Did you notice you can swap positions by moving allies? Yep. Also handy. And let your allies do the killing. You can order them about with T. Let's have them all catch up as it recommends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Open the door. Stand back. Tell them to attack. There. Oh, can't target what I can't see, huh? Attack. Tell to attack the hobgoblin. Stand back and let them do the work. There we go. Um, as long as the monster has a skeleton, enemy skeleton always so works on unskeletalized corpses. So, um, sap, animate, and now we have a hollow goblin skeleton following us as well. Fabulous. Heavy armor hamper spell casting. Try putting on that mail and shield and see what happens. Did I even pick it up? Did it get destroyed? Eh. That's okay. Make sure it's full health before entering a new area. Undead don't breathe so you can cast evaporate without harming your allies. Cool. definitely want to make sure there's space between us and the monsters. Some more monsters to help us out. Try to get into a good position for this. 
and there. There we go. Noel is dead. Very good. Now sadly, these guys can't follow us, but we're done with the tutorial anyway. Finally, let's learn about the gods and divine abilities. So let's grab that mace. There's a bloodstained altar of Trog over here. There's got to be an entrance. Try walking around the glass and searching for secret panels. There we go. Trog is one of many gods. In real game, you can check Control O or click on the dungeon over map in the command panel for a list of all altars and interesting features found so far. You can pray on an altar with P to get an idea of what the god offers you and to join the faith. If you press uh, exclamation mark or right click, you can see more detailed description. Control your for choice with uppercase Y. Oh. Trog is an ancient god of anger and violence. Followers are expected to kill in Trog's name and sacrifice the dead, and in return gain power in battle and occasional reward. Trog hates every wizard and loves to see spellbooks burn. Followers are forbidden to use of spell magic. So Trog uh, likes it when you get rid of spellbooks, um, which turns them into flames, which he's useful as sort of one-use bombs. You can sacrifice corpses. Um, you can kill things as well, and especially kill things that use magic. Um, Trog hates it when you memorize spells or cast or train magic skills. So, yes, let us join. And his big thing is that you can use hunger and piety to uh, burn spell monks, berserk, and protect from hostile engines. Very cool. Some gods like it if you kill monsters in their name. Let us slaughter. Oh. So while we're berserk, we're much better at killing things. But can't do certain other things. And you'll notice now that we're not berserk, we're slowed. We should be wielding that though. Let's rest up a bit. Um, Trog will like it if you burn that book, but let's let, let that hog on and step on it before we do so. Fire. There we go. Very nice. Pray. Grab that. Wield the sword. As an elf, we prefer the sword anyway. Again, it's particularly tough folks, we may want to use Berserk, as we saw before. No, is wounded. You kill the no. Very nice. Actually, let's keep wielding the sword instead. Um, so, let's rest. We're already at the point where we can't uh, berserk. So, that's fine. Mazurka is always useful against multiple enemies as long as you don't run out of steam first. This is true. One of your skills gained a point. We've seen this before. Uh, and we died. But I think you have the idea now. I restarted the tutorial. I wonder if we can do better now. Especially now that I know not to berserk on the first combat. But this is the point of crawl. We're, we're learning all the time about what we should and shouldn't be doing in various situations. Like now I know I'm meant to handle this without 
Oh, necessarily. Actually, yeah, we are, hmm. See how this goes now. Okay, should be better. tried and you get the idea of how difficult crawl is but also how beatable it is there are things that i could be doing and things that i couldn't be doing to be better and that's really what matters in this game expect me to die expect me to die a lot let's be honest here but it's that challenge and it's that interest that makes this game interesting i'm sorry i sort of lost my lp and groove there but it's what happens and uh I'll get better as we go on, hopefully. So, thanks so much for watching, and next time we will actually finish. We'll act well, I shouldn't say we'll actually finish. We just finished the tutorial for all intents and purposes. So, next time we'll actually play the game. And uh, you'll find out why this LP is called The Art of Insertion. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.